Good morning, Jake's house. How's everyone doing? Great. Well, if everyone can just come into the sanctuary, we're going to get started with worship. So Father, we just give you today, Lord, we just surrender all to you. Lord, everything that's been going on in us, Lord, we just give it to you. Father, we just thank you for your joy, Lord, that overcomes every circumstance, Lord, over everything that would be a burden to us, Lord, just that your joy is overwhelming, Lord, it's overcoming. So, Father, we just thank you for your love today, and Lord, we just want to honor you with our praise in Jesus' name. Gotta hold on me, yeah. Your joy is gonna be my strength always. Your joy is gonna be my strength. Your peace gotta hold on me, yeah. Your joy is gonna be my strength always. Oh, your joy, your joy is gonna be my strength. Your peace got a hold of me, yeah. Your joy's gonna be my strength always. Always. Your joy overcomes when the world tries to pull me on. To your joy overcomes for me. Your Crazy, your peace. 
spoken word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath
strong as your love that nothing is as strong as your love that nothing is as strong as your love that nothing is as strong as your love nothing is as strong
anything is on God's throne where it shouldn't be, because that's where God should be. If you're in fear and you're doubting that God's going to come through, just place him back on his throne where he belongs. King of victory, take chapter 9 Solomon had just finished dedicating the temple so they built it and dedicated it God responds in 1 Kings 9 verse 3 he says and the Lord said to him I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me 
I have consecrated this house which you have built to put my name there forever. And catch this, in my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. What Anna was just saying is what happened when they dedicated the temple. When you as a, as, as a son or daughter of God place God on the throne of your heart, God responds and he says this. <laughs> He says, my name will be established in your house forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. If you want God's attention for the rest of your life, put him on the throne of your heart. If you want the attention of the creator of the universe, put him on the throne of your heart. Like That should blow our minds. David says over and over, I'm but a vapor. I'm here today and gone tomorrow. But I can capture the attention of the creator of all of this. What? What? Can capture the attention of a living God. If you want to see God manifest in your life more than you ever have before, Keep him on the throne of your heart. His eyes and his heart will be there perpetually. Wow. That should blow our minds every day. You want the presence of God to be manifest in your life every day? Keep him on the throne of your heart. been gone for the past three weeks and my dad told me before he left that he's been speaking on repentance and I, I didn't know he had been preaching on this but at winter camp we had a service and repentance just broke out we had worship for like two hours it was powerful it was amazing but God put the scripture Joel chapter 2 on my heart and I guess my dad had been sharing it but he says turn your heart to me rend your heart and not your garments then later in the chapter, he says, then I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. If we want to see God's spirit poured out, just keep our hearts turned to him. Just keep him on the throne of your heart. Every day we wake up, God, thank you <laughs> that you're God. <laughs> wow. His eyes and his heart will be there perpetually. If you want God's attention in your life, just keep him on the throne of your heart. Amen. Just lift your hands to him right now. Father, I pray, I pray, God, just a release of your spirit. Like, just increase every day, every day, God, that we would be a people that live in that place of just turning our hearts to you, of keeping you enthroned upon our hearts, God, greater than any other thing in our lives, that you would have all of our attention, you would have all of our affections, God, you would have uh, all of our hearts every single day, God, that we would be a people that keep you on the throne of our hearts. And God, I thank you that as we do that, as we continually turn our hearts to you, God, you promise that your eyes and your heart would be there perpetually, God, that we would have your attention. God, I pray that we as a body of Christ, as a family and a community of believers, God, we would be ones who capture the heart of God. That if we want to see, we want to see revival in this community and in this region, we got to be people that capture the heart of God. His eyes and his heart are here perpetually. So God, we thank you for it. God, we pray that you would continue to help us and lead and guide us, that we would be people that turn our hearts to you every day. God, we thank you for it. We just give it to you. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Come on, that's good. That's good news. That's really good news. We can capture the heart of God. Whoa, come on, come on. Well, just real quick, tonight, if you guys don't know already, we kick off our, our Blaze Northwest for the month. And so tonight at, at 6 o'clock, Cal Pierce is going to be with us. Be here tonight. Be early. Come and pray at 5 o'clock if you want. But be here tonight at 6 o'clock at the very latest. It is going to be an amazing, amazing night. You don't want to miss it. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, our good friends Stephen Bell and Michael Level are going to be with us. And you're not going to want to miss either of those, any of those nights as well. So come hang out with us. It's going to be a powerful, life-changing few days. So amen. Are you guys excited?
Come on, awesome. Well, as you guys find your seats, go ahead and give somebody a big hug, high five, slap them on the back, say hello. Good morning, Jake's House family. We're going to cut the chit-chat to a dull roar right now. You guys, I am so excited. It is Missions Sunday. I don't think you guys heard me. <laughs> hey, Zach, is this thing on? Because I don't think anybody heard me. It's Mission Sunday today, you guys. <laughs> there we go. That's much better. Thank you so much. So for those of you that don't, don't know me, my name is Kelly. I'm the missions director here at Jake's House. So um, we are going to put a slide up on the screen that's going to show you ways that you can give 
um, in our offerings and tithes, and then also ways that you can give to our specific missions that we have. And we're actually going to take our offering at the end of the service today because we want for you to hear the vision of our four local and, mi and international missions before so that you have an opportunity to partner with us today. So is that awesome or what? Partnership is so important, you guys. We can't do missions without partnership. Um, so if you're a new guest with us, I want you just to slip up your hand real quick, or after the service, you can meet me over at the Welcome and the Info Center. Good morning. Thank you, Barbara. Um, meet me over at the Info Center, and I'll show you how to get a free coffee and give you a bag of goodies and some information and stuff. So you guys, let's welcome and honor our new guest this morning. I'd like to quickly direct your attention over here because did you know that if you invite a, a guest to church that you and your guest get a free coffee? That is incentive to invite people to church. So thank you for coming today, Barbara. We'll get you all set up after the service. But while you guys are over there and you're waiting for your coffee that our baristas so tenderly and lovingly prepare for you, I want you to check out our missions wall. What I want you guys to do is start getting to know our missionaries by face, by name, by vision. And then in our handout today, we have uh, specific prayer points that you can target so that you know, man, this is coming up for them. Or uh, Bernie Moore, he's in Africa right now. <laughs> pray for Bernie Moore right now. He's in northern Uganda doing a huge crusade. Like, pray for that man. He's, there's got spiritual opposition coming against him, all kinds of crazy stuff. Pastor Chuck's over in Uganda right now with Pastor Joe. Pastor Patty's going with him. Their grandson, Brandon, is there. Anyhow, I'm getting a little bit off topic, but I get so excited about missions, you guys. Um, so let's see here. In your insert today, you got one of these, and you got one of these. These are special pens that we would like to get back if we can. And at the end of the service, when we give you an opportunity to give, You'll notice on this card that it says Pray, Partner, Go, and it's a missions faith commitment card. So what you're going to do is hear the local and the international visions today, prayerfully consider who you want to partner with, and then write on it with this special pen, tear this portion off, and stick it in the offering with your special pen. And... Uh, <laughs> That would be much appreciated. <laughs> um, so you guys, our heart and our vision for um, the missions ministry at Jake's House Church is to get all of you, our body, our family here involved, but not just involved in missions, but on fire, passionate and excited about what God wants to do in our region because we have tons of opportunities for you to partner with Pastor Nancy and local missions right here in our community. But beyond that, for our international missions, we've got Africa, India, and Mexico, and you're going to hear all about those today. So I'm going to introduce a video for Mexico right now, and uh, you guys just sit back and enjoy the ride today. In 2002, I was given the opportunity to come to Mexico with IMSD, and at first I was a little uncertain. I didn't want my youth group to pay a lot of money to come to Mexico and not really serve, but just sit in seats. And I was relieved when I came down here because IMSD, they know the mayors, they know the local government, they take care of everything. They provide the, the housing and all of the food here in Mexico. My name is Mark Brinkman. We're here with um, International Missions of San Diego. This is my entire family that's with us. It's our first time we've had a whole family uh, come together for this trip. So it's been great coming down here with the entire family and uh, being able to minister together, not only with our youth group, but our whole family here together. And it's been a, just a blessing to us as much as we can uh, put out to the people of San Quentin to get more back from God as we minister in this area.
one special story that happened to me while I was down here uh, probably five or six years ago is we were at a local church here and a, a child came out and he saw that I was wearing a Seattle Sounders jersey and I gave it to him. I gave him the jersey. And the next year we came to the same church and here was the same kid. He was the first person that came out and he was wearing that jersey. And I told the translator, I said, what are the odds that he'd be wearing that shirt? And she goes, pretty good. That's the only shirt he has. And it was kind of a wake up call for me that when you leave America and you go to Mexico, it's, it's a different culture. They're not living on the same level that a lot of people live uh, in America. And so when we bring groups from churches down here to San Quentin, you're stepping out of your comfort zone and you're really ministering the love and the grace uh, of God to these people. And you as a person are able to serve in humility. That is one thing this valley will teach you is humility and being grateful for what you have. In the morning, here's a good example. We're going to feed over 100 orphan children breakfast before they go to school. And so I would encourage everyone, if you have an opportunity, come to the San Quentin Valley with IMSD. Yeah, Mexico. Come on, somebody. Listen, we've been going to Mexico. I've been going since about 2002, back when we lived in uh, Alaska. And my wife, Jenny, this is going to be her first trip in April. We do, uh, yeah, we do three trips. We do an April pastors conference where we teach about 100 of the regional pastors. There will be about 300 pastors from the extended area. And that is my favorite trip. We also do the summer trip at the end of June, beginning of July, with about 30 people from our church. And that's the one we're going to recruit today. We have uh, my daughter and the team have made some amazing baked goods. All that money and the tips are going to go towards this missions trip in June and July. And uh, there's also applications for all of our trips, India, Africa, Mexico, back there. It's a general missions trip application that you need to fill out. But if you want to go to Mexico with us, which you should, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a price $1,300, and before you go, wow, it's a lot. That is so cheap for 11 days on a missions trip, $1,300. And if you want to go to Mexico with me, which you should at some point, it's life-changing. Okay, I, I've been going there, like, like I said, since 2002. I, I love that place. I own that valley. That valley is amazing. It's my second home. <laughs> and the best tacos you will ever have on the planet, hands down, are in Mexico. Okay. <laughs> So when we go in, in April, one of the things that we're going to do is we like to take a book in Spanish that we give to the pastors. Like I said in the video, they don't live on the same level that you and I do. We have a bookstore, and most of us have 30, 40 books at our house right now. Most of these pastors do not. So when we teach at the big missions church down there, the last day we open up this box and we give away these books in Spanish. And it's, they are so grateful because most of them do not have any books like that. And so one of the things that you're going to do if you partner with us financially today and you give money towards Mexico or even in this next month, if you give, part of it's going to go towards buying these resources. And my wife and all and the Magais and some others are going to take them down in April, early April, to the pastor's conference. And then in uh, June and July, I'm telling you, that's when we do our big outreach. We, we play soccer with the kids. That's my favorite part, of course. And then we do vacation Bible study. And which is awesome. Uh, you saw Joe wearing the Superman outfit. He's in Africa this year. My son Trey, and I think Kendall also wore Batman one time. And uh, if, if you don't know how hot it is in Mexico and you're wearing a big black Batman outfit, these guys were suffering for Christ in Mexico. Come on, let me tell you. And then uh, we, we try to go to the same churches every year because we don't want to go to any of these countries and just kind of fly in and fly out and make no impact. We want to build lasting relationships. So it's important that you know that when you give today towards missions, and for me, especially Mexico, that money is going, not, we're not blowing that money on tacos. Listen, we are investing into the churches in the region. We always try to take cash down to give to the local pastors and bless their families as well because some of them are sacrificing to have a church. 
And another amazing thing we're doing is we're going to be starting a business ministry, B153 Mexico, down there this time. So we're going to be taking some cash down, and we're going to try to invest, and we're going to be speaking. Carrie and Rob McGuire are going to be doing some ministering in the business arena down there. So that's another evolution for us in Mexico missions. And then, lastly, come on, somebody, say the youth. Kendall, give me a high five. <laughs> Two years ago, my daughter Shaylee and Kendall went down as kind of a test run to the Christmas outreach that IMSD does. And there's that year, I think there was over 1,000 youth that first year, and they gave out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of presents to poor kids in the region. And then this last year, we took, uh, I think, eight people. And this next year, we're, or this year, we're going to try to take 15 people. We're going to grow it. I, I'm telling you prophetically that that December trip in the, in the future will be our largest trip because it, it's not as, it doesn't cost as much, and it's not as long, and it's super impacting to see all those youth just worshiping God, just going crazy for the king. It's amazing. Um, we have invested in Mexico for so long that it, 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 we're never going to stop going. We're, we're always going to be going to Mexico, and we want you to go with us. So you have two ways of doing it, three ways, actually. I, I want you guys to become just a prayer partner for Mexico. I really do. I want you to begin to pray and prophesy over Mexico and what we do. I also want you to partner financially with us. There's a lot of things that we do that cost money, and like I said, it's cheap for what we're doing. And th these teams are giving sweat and blood all day long, hardly any sleep, just doing the work of the kingdom. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can go with us. I want you to go with us. I will do whatever I have to do to make sure that you go if you want to go. So if you're like, well, I don't have any money, it all starts with you going back there at the table and writing your name down and your email. That's the first step. God will always pay for what he wants you to do. But if you never write your name down, then you're not going to open the financial accounts of God to help you. Someone say, man, how many of you know God's not poor? He wants to open the door, that wrap, that rhyme, that was good. Okay, I want you to go. So last thing, if you want to go to Mexico on any of our trips, you sign up in the back during, uh, right after the service, before the second service. Amen? So come on, let's just, one more time, let's just honor God for what he's doing in Mexico. Come on, arriba. It's going to be good. The second ministry we want to talk about today is our local Outreach and our local missions. And here's Pastor Nancy Johnson. Give it up for Nancy. So we're going to show a video of what's been going on locally. And so, Father, we just thank you that you can show us your heart that's been out on the streets here locally. Let's watch.
So those were our loving people out there, loving with the love of Jesus. And we're so excited to go out and bless people. You saw we were giving out a lot of gifts and just God's generosity. So the vision for the local outreach is to raise up and train on fire lovers of Jesus with God's evangelistic heart. And to go out, you know, and, and go after the one. Because Jesus went after the one. He left the 99 and went after the one. And he was talking to me this morning. Is he said, Jesus, why are you doing this? And he goes, because I love. Because of love. That's why he does all these things. He, when, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion. Compassion flowed out of his heart. So we're building up teams with compassion and taking him out. And one of the things that we're doing is Friday fires. It's super fun. We, we've done a lot of different things. We've gone out to Christmas House with Tracy Ulrich. Um, we've, we partnered with Business 153. We did um, 30 businesses we went out and prayed for. That was super fun. God was, God was totally on it, too. We, um, one lady got her back. She fell in the parking lot that morning, the business owner. And we went in, and uh, I got a word of knowledge that somebody had pain, and she raised her hand. And she goes, yeah, I fell in the parking lot this morning, and my neck and my shoulder are just in super pain. God healed her right on the spot. So, yeah, God, God is so good. And we're, we're raising up teams that, that are going out, you know, wanting to walk in the gifts of the Spirit, signs and wonders, and, and move in power. That's what God's leading us into in this time and season because we're in a season of evangelism. And, and uh, Billy Graham just passed, and I believe that that mantle is coming down to all of us and that there's going to be a huge, a huge wave of revival for the end time harvest. So we're training up and raising up people. We've been taking out flowers and Bibles and promise cards and just lavishing people. It opens them up so quick when you give them a flower. And so we're just learning to start those conversations. And when I first started, God just showed me, you know, just talk to the checker, just say hi, you know, just smile. And then I learned, you know, to start talking to them because I was really super shy. But it's not hard. You just have to be willing. And God, God wants to, he just wants to shake the apple tree, Tracy was telling me. Just shake the apple tree and we just catch the apples. You know, it's, it's super simple. All I have to do is be willing. Just be willing. And then we have um, the cold weather shelter. We have got a lot of people here volunteering for that. I was just there this last week and it was 21 degrees. And we had 15 people in the gym here. And I don't know, it was loud because so many of them were snoring. <laughs> they were just so comfortable here in this place in the atmosphere of heaven, you know. And I just felt like it was Jesus just like a mother hand, just spreading his wings over his baby chicks, you know, and just loving them. There was so much love in there. But, yeah, we have... Um, um, that's Ken Hale running that ministry. And then Deanna, Pastor Deanna's running the jail, women's jail ministry. If you want to go learn how to teach the Bible, they're doing Bible studies. She would love to have you come. We would love to have you come to Friday Fires and to Sharon Peralt. She's running the Salvation Army uh, ministry. They're doing like five dozen eggs every week. And they know that Jake's house is coming because they do um, biscuits and gravy every time. So <laughs> there's people getting saved out there. Then her and her daughter run this transitional home, which was what you were seeing with the baskets of food that we brought. And we just lavished them with gifts. And, you know, they were just crying. All eight of the women in that home have been saved. There's a men's home, a men's home too, and they're just bringing donuts to them, you know, <laughs> just trying to build relationship, and it's hilarious. But God knows how to get to people's hearts. And so, yeah, we're, it's so fun to go out with him. You guys, it's, it's just the joy of loving. And um, he is a blast. It's so fun to follow him. He just wants you, my sheep hear my voice, you know, and just follow him. And so we would love for you to partner with us. We have um, Friendship House up in Mount Vernon. Also, they feed 100 people um, on the first Saturday of the month. So that's Tom and Shelly Ricketts. So come and join us. It's just so much fun. And if you, wanna, if you want to, we would need resources for food, like food for the Friendship House, food for the Salvation Army, and the, and the cold weather shelter here. We also have a food bag ministry where people can come in and just knock on our door and we'll give them a bag of food. So, yeah, and then we invite them to come to church. So it's really beautiful what God's doing here and the hearts. that. And so I'm just going to 
pray for us. Father, I just thank you that you're releasing a heart of evangelism. God, that you're releasing us to be ambassadors of hope. Lord, that we would bring your love out to this city. Father, it's our heart to take the city back. Lord, we want our cities, we want our nation, we want to be in revival. Lord, we, we want your presence on us. Lord, we want it to be all about you and your love and your compassion, God. God, so we thank you. We give you the glory for everything that you're doing. Thank you. And then if you could sign up, there's a sign-up list over here. And um, there's papers and flyers about every one of these ministries that are operating here. Thank you very much. We give you the glory, Father. Amen. Hey Amen. So, so don't forget, you know, offerings at the end. And if you want to give to local missions or Mexico, uh, India, and Africa. And I just want to say thank you to Nancy because, uh, you know, her teams, they do a lot of work. And, you know, this, is, uh, this happened the other day. Her husband and I were playing tennis in Kamano Island, and it was super cold. And he was coming back, and he had to work the next day. But Nancy had told him no. I'm going to go to the do the cold weather shelter tonight. So she was there till like 2.33 in the morning here serving people with, with the other part of the team. And listen, if you want to understand how important the cold weather shelter is, wait till it's in the 20s and go outside for a bit. And you'll see how cold it is and how important this local ministry is. So let's just honor them one more time. <clears throat> and now... Our Indian ministry, which I have a hard time thinking about without the special curry. So I just want to remind you, you know, in the back, we're selling Mexican um, baked goods for our Mexico trip. Um, they were in India and just got back, so we didn't have them do any curry. But next month, we're doing another mission Sunday. So I'm, I'm hoping we'll have some curry. That's, that's my special. So this is Teresa, her and her husband, uh, Jeshu, are on staff pastors. They run Destiny International School Ministry and our trips to India. Hi, everybody. I'm Teresa. Um, we are going to um, start with a video, but I just need to um, introduce it a bit. Um, like Terry said, we just got back from India about 10 days ago. I think I'm over jet lag. We'll see. Um, I'm still waking up at 3 in the morning. But um, the first thing we did was uh, in India was we did a, a two-day evangelism training. Um, we had a group of team of 15 people, and these people were crazy, on fire, radical evangelists. And so we took that to um, the local church um, in Chennai, and we taught them how to evangelize using the Jesus at the door tool. So um, this video is about that.
hadn't seen that video before either, so that was awesome. Thank you, Kendall and Jared, for all your hard work. So um, we had a fantastic time in India, um, way too much to share about um, right now. But um, Jeshu and I uh, lead Impact Asia. Um, it's built on the foundation of Jeshu's dad's uh, church planning ministry that he did there for many, many years. And um, after he passed away, um, you know, we laid it down for a while because it just wasn't the right timing. But a couple years ago, God spoke to Jeshu um, powerfully and just said, it's time now. It's time to walk in your heritage. It's time to pick up that mantle um, and, and, and not just pick it up, but, but take it further than he ever would. Um, you know, Jeshu was just thinking India because that's where his dad operated. And God was like, no, India is too small. We want all of Asia. We want all of Asia to know, to know Jesus. So, um, so we are walking out in obedience. This is a walk of obedience and faith and trust. Um, we're only two and a half years old, but God is already doing amazing things. Um, we do take two uh, teams a year. Eventually, we want that to be three, but right now we're at two. Um, we have another trip coming up in June. Um, it's going to be for about two weeks on the ground and with a couple days of travel time on either end. So um, we invite anyone who wants to come with us. Um, it's a powerful, life-changing time. Um, I was trying to look for a quote um, that Brian Chu put on his website a while ago about uh, young people going into missions. Now, I'm not talking only about India. I'm passionate about missions in general. Anybody that knows me knows that. Um, go to Mexico, do local outreaches, go to Africa, go to India. I don't care where you go or with whom, just go. There's, there's some statistic out there that uh, I wanted to try to quote more accurately, but it went along the lines of 70 to 80 percent of the young people that go on an international missions trip when they're, I think, 12, 13, or 14, continue walking with the Lord powerfully for the rest of their life. That's not to be dismissed. I know I went when I was 12 to Mexico, and it changed me, and it, it ch impacted my life for the rest of my life and um, laid the foundation for who I am and where I am at today. Um, Impact India has three main focuses. We, um, I mean, there's a lot to do over there. There's a lot to do everywhere. But as we prayed and sought the Lord, he narrowed it down to three main focuses. Um, the first is family. Uh, we want to build and nurture healthy families. Um, there's not a lot of, of emphasis on uh, the health and, um, and well-being of the family in India. And so we are coming that, we're targeting that specifically um, th uh, through Kingdom Marriage Seminars. Um, we've been doing that for a couple years now, and we have had incredible results. The other thing that we are working towards is a business center. Um, India's in poverty, and uh, especially the pastors and the Christian workers there generally, for the most part, live in poverty. And we know that that's not God's will. That's not God's heart. And so we want to bring business principles, um, just like Terry was talking about Mexico. We want to do that in India as well. So our heart, um, our, our um, long-term plan is to establish family centers and business centers where we offer specific training um, relating to those two focuses. And then the other thing that we are having so much fun with is our youth explosions. Uh, we had one uh, two years ago with 250 people. Last year, it was 1,200, and this a uh, couple weeks ago, we had another 1,200 people, young people come, and we just, um, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was loud. It was so much fun. Um, uh, just people worshiping, uh, young people worshiping, um, them getting on fire, being challenged in their walk with the Lord, being challenged to live um, with everything they have for Jesus, and it's a powerful thing. So um, please pray for us. Please um, go with us. Uh, please support us. 
um, talk to myself or Jeshu if you have any other questions. And um, yeah, just go, just go. Um, you know, one of the things you need to know about our trips too, all of them, is that they're not stagnant trips. And by that, I mean, we don't just have this set template and we just do it every year and we try to funnel everyone into it. Um, that's, I would never go on a missions trip if that was the case. All of our trips, especially the international ones, are, are evolving every year. Uh, so they had uh, 1,200 youth. We had 1,000 to 1,500 youth. Uh, I don't know about Africa yet, but, you know, the business aspect, the youth aspect, everything's changing every year. And we believe that's what God wants to do to be creative in how we're impacting these countries. So one more time, let's just give it up for India. I'm going someday. I'm going to India. I'm going to Africa. I'm going to Israel. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Well, our African director is in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> You know you're doing good when you can't find your directors because they're on the mission field, you know. So Tom and Shelly just got back from a trip. Uh, you were on the last one. And uh, Tom uh, is one of these amazing creative guys. Uh, I always love it when he shares because he's just like unplanned, but he just goes with the flow too. And so give it up for Tom. Thank you. You want to do the video first? Cycle. Did you check that out? I, 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 Africans and Indians are so creative. I tell you, they know how to get people on a vehicle. So uh, we love that about them. So as you know, uh, Chuck is the Africa director. And if we could, um, if we could look at, I think it's, what camera's looking at me? That one there? Today is Chuck's birthday. And I know later, he's going to, he'll live stream this later. I know he's out in the field right now. But he'll be able to watch the recording. So if we could just turn to that camera there and just and just wave at Chuck and say happy birthday, Chuck. We love you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Today it's his 70th birthday. I don't know if I was supposed to share that, but it's out there. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, the reason uh, I'm up here, because I'm not Chuck, um, is uh, my uh, Shelly. Uh, Ryan and myself, we've been to Africa three times, uh, the same place where Chuck is at. Uh, those are the same places that we've been. And I don't know about you, but you remember that, that song, uh, you know, Lord, please don't send me to Africa. That was so me and so my wife. Um, but we have a little girl who is, she's probably not in here, so I can't embarrass her. Uh, but she's amazing. And at five years old, Lord gave her a dream that she was going to go to Africa and, and ride an elephant. And we're like, you're five. That's just, that's just five-year-old stuff, you know. Don't worry about that. There's a lot of germs in those countries. I'm not going. So, <laughs> so if, if you know me, that's, I'm germ aware. Um, anyways, so God really moved on our heart for a few years. And at, at, uh, when Ryan was nine years old, uh, there was a trip going to be going to Uganda and, and the Lord started stirring in our hearts, and we're like, well, you know, we'll just check it out. We'll see, you know, what we think. And, uh, and we needed a lot of shots to go for the first time, and so those are expensive. And uh, anyways, it was, I think, for, the, for all three of us to go, our first trip 
was about $9,000. And I was like, well, that's really expensive, so I'm not going. Um, and uh, so we just threw a fleece out there said, Lord, if you want us to go, then, I mean, you need to bring the money in. And $9,000 came in. We just sent out a couple letters, talked to a few people. We had $9,000 in less than 30 days. And so I was like, ah, I guess I'm going. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to share a little bit about just our experience there, and then I have some notes that Chuck wants me to relay to you guys. Um, but it is, um, for those of you who have never been on a missions trip and you're a little nervous about it or not sure, but after that first trip that we went on in Africa, it was like, I just, I just, as soon as we got home, I wanted to go back. You just absolutely fall in love with the people. Um, on our first trip, in, we were northern Uganda near Sudan, and we went to an orphanage to, uh, to paint an orphanage up there. And I tell you, they, they had never seen, uh, most of them had never seen white people before, but to watch um, your nine-year-old daughter walk out into a field and all these orphan African kids come up and they just are all over her and love on her and she loves on them. And it's just like, it is the absolute best thing in the world. Um, and then the village hears about it and they, everybody just comes. And, uh, and so we really... From that moment on, just the mission bug just really bit me, and my heart is so for missions now. Um, and I love Africa, um, and we look forward to going back there soon. Um, and the vision right now for Africa, this is a, I'm going to read what Chuck sent me, um, and it is to, uh, the mission is to establish intentional leadership teachings and demonstrations within Yukon, uh, while increasing the number of team members to cover more of the presently 27 different zones that they have there in Uganda, uh, to establish leadership programs in Nigeria. Um, and there's a pastor in Nigeria that approached PK, and so we're hoping that what's taking place in Uganda will also begin to take place in Nigeria. So we're looking into that in September, August, September, that that might start. Um, and so, uh, so we're super excited about that. Uh, goals and method, uh, create within a syllabus for a three-day training seminar using two days of, tra of leadership training and a one day of business training for each zone visit. Uh, create an online presence of continued teaching and encouragement. And then also, uh, that way, just so you're communicating, you go teach them and you're like, here's two days of teaching. Enjoy. Good luck. I'll see ya. you. Know, but we want to continue that relationship with them however, uh, however way possible. Um, and then also to create a team to assist in the setup and functions to carry out the vision. Um, and assist PK as needed to set up the training in Nigeria. And you ask, well, why are we in, why are we in Uganda? Um, because they, uh, they approached uh, Jake's house uh, a few years ago. There was, um, uh, we were at a, a service yesterday for a gentleman named Ron DeVore, a memorial service. And Ron DeVore is the reason why this ministry is in Africa and we're assisting them. He started WAMP and UCOM. And so Ron and Shirley DeVore, at 51 years old, they sold their HIVAC, uh, HVAC uh, company and moved, at 51, moved to Uganda and started a ministry there. Um, they bought a, a shipping container, flipped it upside down, cut some holes in it, and they lived in that for 10 years as their home. Um, Ron passed away in January while we were in India, and... Um, they went over some of uh, just what he's done in Uganda and because uh, his, his health started failing about four years ago and that's when they approached us, um, approached Jake's house and uh, he started 264 churches in Africa, a Bible college, several orphanages, several primary schools and several high schools. Um, and as his health started failing, I mean, that's a lot to manage. Um, and there were just some, some changes happening. They approached us. And so really, uh, that is uh, why we're there. It's because they approached Jake's house and said, we need some, we need some leadership on how we're going to move forward with all of these churches and all these pastors and all these leaders. So that's the why. And what they do is, is um, right now is the focus is going there and training the pastors and the leaders. Um, and it's, it's just how to live life and how to, how to uh, not only just how to pastor a church, but how to pastor a village, how to pastor their family. Um, just like uh, Teresa said about families, it's, uh, 
they don't really know how to do family. And so they haven't been taught. And so that's part of our vision is to help them uh, do that. Um, also, um, in this building a relationship for about two and a half years, uh, they put together a leadership training manual, uh, Chuck and PK. And so Chuck's trip where he's there right now, that's what he is starting. So they have what is called zones in Uganda. And Chuck is going to different zones. He's going to six zones while he's there. And he's going to do four days at each zone. And it's just a leadership manual training. And it's very similar to what we do in Belong Tracks 1. Um, so leadership training. And so that's taking place for the very first time uh, on this trip. So be praying for them. Um, and there's also Andrew and Susan Wasanga who are... It's our daughter church in Bougie, Boozy Worship Center. They're an awesome, awesome couple. And anyways, uh, be praying for them, but they're training them up and to do what it is that they've called them to do. They need finances. But my last thing is, I'm going to say this, is we don't need more preachers in, on the mission field. We need more fathers and mothers. So if you don't like preaching, that's awesome because we don't need you for preaching. We need you to be a father and a mother. All right? That's what I want. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Megan, if we can turn these lights on, you guys. Um, you know, it's important to understand, too, that all of these trips that we're talking about, uh, it's not like we're going to take you to a foreign country and just work you to death and then put you back on a plane. One of the things that we want you to do is to enjoy the country as well and to get to know the culture. And so, like, for Mexico... Halfway through the trip, uh, we, we go down south about 10 miles, and there's this really nice beach, and we just kind of relax because by then the team is a little bit worn out. And we eat a nice meal and just relax in the sunshine, and then we, we do the second half of our trip. And then Marta and Candido from San Diego, who lead the teams, they take us to a place called La Bufadora where you can do some shopping and stuff like that. So uh, I tell you that because we don't want to just take you as a team member. We want you, by the time you get back, to have spent 11 days on the trip and become part of the family. Because when you go down there, uh, you grow together. And uh, through all the good things and the bad things, there's always something that goes wrong on the trips, which I am so excited about. That's my favorite part, because that's when people grow the most, when it's not easy. And uh, I just want to remind you, as you're getting ready to give in the offering, that... Um, I want you to pray. It's, it's on the card that you received. Uh, you can pray with us, pray over all of these missions trips. You can partner with us financially in just a moment or in the next several weeks. And you can also go. Remember, I don't want any of you to leave here today with, with a lie of the enemy, which is, well, that's good for some to go, but I'll never be able to. If you want to go, God can provide a way. How many of you want to go to missions at some point? Just ra wave your hand in the air. Okay, the other, other of you, wave your hand too, because you're going to be going financially with us <laughs> as we give today. I want our offering team to get ready as we receive this offering. Most of you received one of these uh, with your bulletin. This is a, a missions insert, and on one side it has prayers from our different missionaries that we have around the world, and the other side, the side that you're seeing now, has our three, our four trips, uh, well, our local outreach, our Africa, India, and Mexico, and how you can pray with us, how you can partner with us, and the opportunities to go. But this right here is the most important part. This is our missions card. And like Kelly said earlier, we, we gave you a special marker. And we want you to fill this out and then take this bottom part. And you're going to put it in the offering in just a moment. And that's going to be either your giving or your commitment to give for these missions opportunities. And then this other part you're going to take home and put on your fridge or somewhere else. Or, or maybe in your Bible where you can be praying for us throughout the year. Amen? So I want you to go ahead and prepare your offerings that you're going to be giving. And um, I, I want you to go big. I want you to believe big and think big. My wife really challenged me the other day. We were believing big about something, and I thought I was believing big. And then when she told me what she was believing, I realized mine was pretty small. <laughs> and I said, I said the wrong thing. I just said, well, you, you can do the big thinking for us. And uh, that's not true. We, all of us have to think big, believe big, have big faith. 
whether it's stepping out to go to Africa and India or joining the local outreaches, whatever you need to do, or just giving financially. Okay, we want you to do it big because, like I said, we're going to use every penny, every dollar. Someone even came up before and said, here's, here's some pesos we've been saving. To, you know, take it to Mexico. So we're going to. So everything helps. Everything helps. So uh, as we get ready for the offering, I want you to lastly put your hand on your heart as I pray. Father, we thank you that uh, we live here in Snohomish County, but, God, our heart is around the world. And, Father, I don't want just my heart, but I want my finances to be around the world, too. So, Father, we just thank you for, for everyone that's giving today in the next several weeks, that, God, whatever they give, it's just going to go around the world, and it's going to impact nations. And, Father, I pray that we even double and triple the amount of people that go on these trips this year, Father, I just pray a rising up, an army of people who want to go create businesses in Mexico, Africa, India, and even in Snohomish County to expand the kingdom of God. Come on. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. So as they're passing the buckets around, we just got this quick little uh, ad for you to look at. And in the next several weeks, if you're on social media, I'm going to have the different teams uh, begin posting uh, some of the needs that they have for their different countries. So that's going to be on our Jake's House Church Facebook page. You can also type in the search engine Jake's House Mexico. We have a Mexico page uh, as well. But we're going to begin to get out some of the needs that you have. And also don't forget that if you want to sign up for one of the trips back where we're selling the baked goods, we have our general application for all of our missions, teams, and missions trips and don't forget cal pierce tonight cal pierce founder of the healing rooms in spokane washington it's connected to the bethel church as well in redding california i'm telling you there are healing rooms around the world it's an honor to have cal here tonight so make sure you're here if you know someone that's sick bring them if you know someone that's frustrated with christianity bring them it's time for healing and revival amen Okay, listen, last thing, bring those offering buckets up here. Everyone else stand with us. We're going to pray over this offering and over missions. And then we'll be done for the day and have a blessed week. Have a safe drive home. Come on, bring them up here. You can hold them. Come on up here. Stretch your hands forth. Listen, you guys, Christianity is very simple. It's not about the supernatural and all these things. That's just a side, that's a side thing that's amazing. It's about spreading the love of Christ around the world and being practical in helping people. <clears throat> Amen. So, Father, we just thank you for the, the, the money that's been sowed today for missions. Father, we just thank you that you are going to do amazing today. Father, we, we pray that you're going to multiply this, God. And I, I just thank you for Africa and India and Mexico and Israel coming up and these other missions fields that we're going to be going to in the coming years and local outreach, God, that you're just going to double and triple the amount of money that we need because people are going to be giving so much. So, Father, we thank you. Come on. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. 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 Come on. Let's just give honor to God. <clears throat> thank you guys for coming today. Make sure you bless someone. If you need prayer this morning, our prayer team's coming right now. We would love to pray with you. If not, just have a great day. Tell someone you love them. You're glad they're here today.